Hello and welcome to this edition of our Enterprise Development Seminar. We'll continue with our series of discussions on how to achieve financial freedom through a technology-enabled business. We have said in previous episodes that this is not so much about technology as it is about building a business. Technology is simply a tool that we are using to build the business. So we're going to be covering some very important fundamentals. Okay, we're going to focus on those fundamentals. Then we now show how we can use technology to implement the necessary action steps that will help us achieve those fundamentals. Do you understand, okay? So in today's um, episode, we're going to be discussing team building, okay? How do you build a team for your business? And why do you really need to build a team? When should you start building a team? Okay, and there's some very, very important insights that will really help you. Okay, let's take our opening prayer, then we go into the training session. Dear God, I ask for an outpouring of your rain upon the business and career in which I have offered my work as an act of worship to you. By your spirit of wisdom and revelation, fill my mind with divinely inspired thoughts and strategies that will empower me for supernatural productivity and extraordinary success in all that I do. Open the heavens and grant me insights, concepts, and ideas that will place a clear distinction upon my work through the uniqueness of my products and services. In addition to this, Father, I ask for the reign of your favor upon every work I have ever rendered. I ask that this reign of favor will cause the voice of my work to be heard on the streets and in palaces, that men and kings will be drawn unto me, and by this, my work generates great surplus. I ask that kings will hear of the excellent spirit your reign has produced in me, and they will open great doors and grant opportunities unto me. Okay, let's start with an illustration of a journey from Lagos, Nigeria to Ogomosho. For those that are not in Nigeria, Ogomosho is in Oyo State of Nigeria. Business or entrepreneurship is a journey. We talk about the journey of entrepreneurship, for example, you know. Okay, so we're going to um, see what we can learn from this journey. When I was going to get married many years ago, that was in 2016. <laughs> okay, I was living in Lagos. My fiance, now my wife, was also living in Lagos. And the wedding was going to take place in Obomosho. My best man, who also happens to be my best friend, <laughs> and his fiance, now his wife also. All of us were friends and we're still friends, okay? So we're traveling together, okay? And um, the journey was not so smooth. And I don't think he had even ever been to Obomo shop before then. I, I, I don't think so. If he had been, he, had, he hadn't driven from Lagos to Obomo shop before. And that particular day, the road was really bad. The road has been bad for a long time. I hope they fix it soon. Now, the road was really bad, and the traffic was unusually heavy. Lots of trucks on the road blocking everywhere. So eventually, at some point, we had to actually go off the main road and start taking bush paths. Bush pato, <laughs> like real bush parts. Now, what I want to point out is this. He wasn't going to Obama shop because the road was good. You know, he and his fiancée, they weren't going with us because the road was good. They weren't going with us because the journey was going to be, you know, nice and all of that. They were going because we had a relationship. You understand? They, they wanted to, you know, you know, do life with us as it were. You understand? We wanted to do life together. They want to do life with us. We want to do life with them. And that is the picture you should have when building a team for your business. You need to, first of all, come to terms with the fact that your resources alone will never be enough to drive your vision. If your resources will never be enough, except your vision is so small, you know, all of these people that have uh, me, myself, and high kind of vision, okay? Once I have, you know, maybe I have some good houses somewhere, you know, I have some good cars, I'm okay, my family is okay. If that's your kind of vision, well, you probably shouldn't even be an entrepreneur in the first place, okay? Because entrepreneurship is first, about people, how are you helping people to grow? How are you helping people to develop, you know, and um, all of that? How are you making life easier and better for people? How are you improving 
their experience of life, creating value and solving problems. We talked about all of these things at the beginning. Now, once you have settled those things, then the next thing you should be thinking about, you settle those things, you are working on your own personal development, which you must always do as an entrepreneur. The next thing you should be thinking about is building a team, okay? And the team they, they are, you are building, they have to be people that love you, people that care about you, people that believe in what you are doing, people that want to journey with you, people that want to stay in the car with you. Or whether you are you know, taking details, whether you have to, whatever you have to do, they understand that, okay, we are doing this together. They are providing insight, they are providing ideas. But when you are starting a business, as it is with most things, you don't really know how you are going to do a lot of things. You know what you want to do, you know where you are going. We've talked about clarifying your idea, you know, defining your business vision and mission and all of that. So you know where you are going. You know what you are looking to achieve, but you don't know how. And it's okay. It's okay not to know how. The question you should really be asking is not how. The question you should be asking is who. You understand. Take note of that. So when you understand that, number one, it takes the pressure off you, and then you're able to move forward. Even Jesus Christ said it. He said that the kingdom of God is as if a man should plant a seed in the ground, and then he sleeps and he wakes up and the seed grows, and he doesn't know how. So at the beginning, you won't know how. It's okay. So the question you should be asking is who? So I am going on this journey. Who do I want with me on this journey? Do you understand? So that's where the question of building a team comes in. So how do you know those kind of people that you need on your team? You know, everybody talks about, oh, I need a dream team. You know, the dream team will do this and all of that. And the way we define dream team, like, okay, maybe people that are eminently qualified, the best of the best and all of that. But the definition of dream team that I am giving you is a team that will help you build your dream. Okay, take note of that. You need a team that will help you build your dream. You can't do it alone. Okay, so how do you build that team? That's what we're going to be looking at in this um, um, session. I hope we can cover all of the important things, but if we are not able to cover, we continue in the next um, um, session. Okay, now, so we've established the fact that you need a dream team. That's a team that will build your, your dream. I like the way uh, um, John Maxwell puts it. He says that, Teamwork makes the dream work, okay? Teamwork makes the dream work. So if you don't have a team, your dream is not likely to work. But if you have a big dream and you have a bad team, you are in big trouble, like literally, okay? So you need the, the right kind of team to help you, you know, uh, build your business. Not really help you build your business, to build the business with you because now it's something that you are doing together, okay? And um, that's why, you know, we say that it's important to... Uh, build your business in such a way that you are actually using your business to build people, you know, instead of using people to build your business. So the people that are building with you, they are also being built in the process, okay? They are being developed. And uh, don't have this mindset that, well, all of those things are good, but, um, well, do I really need a team now? Well, I'm going to need a dream team one day, you know, but not now. Don't think like that. If you are thinking like that, you are going to stay as a solopreneur for too long, and that will limit your growth. It will affect a lot of things, and you are going to, you know, severely limit your impact. You may even eventually go out of business, but, you know, it's important that you don't think like that. You don't say that, oh, I will need a dream team one day. That's not the mindset, okay? So I, I'm putting it this way. You won't need a dream team one day. You will need a dream team from day one, okay? You can write that down so that you remember. You won't need a dream team one day, you will need a dream team from day one, okay? So from the very first day that you are open for business, you need the dream team. And this dream team, like I said, it doesn't mean people that are eminently qualified and all of that. You can just like, you know, there's this saying that it's not, you know, God does not call the qualified. I'm sure some of you must have heard that before. He qualifies the cult. You should also apply that in building your business. So, the, you know, and many are called, few are chosen. So you are going to call a lot of people. You are going to have, you know, put out applications, people apply and all of that. Then you now need to have criteria that you use to choose the people that will actually do the journey with you. And when you are choosing these people, you have to prioritize character. Okay, what kind of people are they? What do they believe? What is their mindset? You know, how do they think? Okay, those things are much more important than the technical abilities because technical abilities can be developed. That is what we mean by qualifying the code. Now, these people have the qualities in terms of character, okay, but they don't have what you are looking for in terms of skills. You can teach them those skills. You can train them. You can help them develop. You can help them grow. But if people don't have character, 
that's the work their parents and themselves should have done, okay? Somebody that is 20 something years old and 30 something years old and does not have character, you are the one that now wants to build. And this also applies to marriage. We're not talking about marriage, but it's important to take So when you see those red signs, wrong. Don't say, hey, I will change him or I will change her. You know, understand? And that also works in business, okay? You need a team of people that their character is solid, okay? They believe what you believe. They are going where you are going. If you believe, for example, that business is not about making money, you have to make money. We always say that, like I say, anybody that says money is not important is either sincerely ignorant or deliberately dishonest. So you have to make money in your business. But the purpose of business is not to make money. Money is an outcome. It's not the purpose. So if you believe that and you now have people that say, ah, no, money is the purpose. So if you no profit, ah, you know, profit is the purpose of business, you can't work together. You understand? So you need to have ways to know what people believe. And if you tell people, oh, what do you believe? For example, you ask, oh, share your vision with me. Everybody has something to say. So you need to ask some kinds of questions that in responding to those questions, you understand who they are. That's why Jesus Christ said that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And you will notice that Jesus asked questions a lot. You know, there was a time he asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? You know, and sometimes when people even ask him questions, he will reply with another question. You know, there was a time that uh, they brought a woman to, you know, this woman was caught in adultery. That's if the woman was doing the adultery, you know, where was the man? But that's by the way. Now, this woman was caught in adultery according to the law of Moses. This is what should be done. This is this. Jesus didn't say what. Then after, why is he saying, why is he saying, what's the happening? Are you not going to say anything? Say, right. Then he asked them a question. Which among you has not seen? You know, so it, you need to master that hack. And it's part of the process of coaching. And if you are going to be um, a successful entrepreneur, you should actually be a coaching leader also. You should be a leader that coaches the people that work with you. That's how you help them develop. And one of the uh, disciplines of coaching is, you know, asking the right question. So find out, you know, check out interviews, you know, check out, read, you know, learn, you know, attend seminars like this and attend workshops because at the workshop, we sit down, you know, we sit down with everybody face to face or we're trying to create virtual editions too, but mostly we do you know, physical workshops and, you know, we can help each, body, each person with their specific question, each person and everybody with their specific questions, specific issues. So we like invest in your own growth, you understand, so that you understand how all of these things work, okay? Then you can also check samples. You can check samples, you can you know, uh, see what you can adapt for your own uh, um, system. But at the end of the day, you need to create something that works for you. For example, at the Plenipotent Company, one of the things that we do you know, for those that are going to be members of our core team is that you write your obituary. And I have written my own, I've made it public. And I share the link so everybody can you know, so read it. So you won't say that, uh, ah, why is, you know, because we got a lot of, but the point is when you ask people to uh, write your obituary, ah, like, what do you mean? Do you understand? You, I'm used to going saying I'm going to die. But we believe that death is something that everybody will experience one day. You understand? So why not plan for You already know you are going to die one day. So why not plan for it? You understand? That's what we believe. So when you plan for it that way, you're able to like, okay, so what kind of life do I want to live? You understand? What kind of life do I want to live? When I live here, what people, what are people going to say about me? Okay, what will my mentees say about me? What will my mentors say about me? What will my you know, family say about me? You think about all of those kind of things. So we can now help you to say, okay, fine, this kind of job that you want to take, this or a position you want to fill in our company, will it help you to fulfill these things? Do you understand? Okay, so but if you just say, oh, share your vision, everybody will say a lot of things. But by the time it's okay, write your vision. Ah, number one, some people first go out. They say, no, 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 me, I can't work with this kind of company. So you think you, you understand. <laughs> Do you get it? So that's what we're saying. Now, I'm not saying that you should be asking people to write your vision. I'm just saying that that is one of the things that we do. And I've not seen any other company that does that. I've not. Maybe if you know any, let me know. But what I'm just saying is that you, as you keep thinking, strategizing, iterating, you keep looking at you know, what works for you, what does not work, and all of that. But it's not everybody that goes through this assignment, but those that will be on our court team, they go through it. And I have made my own public, like, like I said, so you can uh, um, check it. In fact, I think I've made it a pinned tweet. Where, depending on where you are checking this, it might have changed. But um, if you are, this is being, um, this session is actually holding in July 2022, okay? So, but I don't know when you might be listening to it, but for those that are on the live session, if you check my pinned tweet on Twitter, my Twitter handle is Philip Amiola, at Philip Amiola, you will see my obituary there. I posted it on Facebook on the 1st of January 2022. You understand the hair. So uh, I have said some things. For example, I know I'm not going to die before I'm 96. 
I will not, uh, when I'm 96, if I need more time, but I want to finish everything before then, you understand? And then just like Paul was saying that, okay, I wish to go, but you know, because of you, I want to remain. That kind of, you understand? You know you have run your race, you have finished your course. You understand? You are deliberate about it now. But when you actually well, share your vision with me, share your dream, they will say all sorts of things. But when you give that kind of assignment, it causes people to think like, ah, oh man, what are we talking about? What is this? What kind of conflict? You understand? Okay, now, for example, we have an application process also where you people answer certain questions. And we ask, one of the questions we ask um, is that, um, I, I might show you that form uh, as an example. Is okay, fine. What is the your biggest goal in life? No, not exactly, but something like that. Like, what is your biggest goal in life? And somebody says his biggest goal is to, you know, maybe become a manager or something, or, you know, become a something, something in the plenipotent company. This is a company you don't even know yet. You don't even know yet. You haven't even entered the company. Let's even say it's a company you know, you know, like and all of that. And maybe you have worked there, or you know somebody that has worked there and they have told you something. How can your biggest goal in life be to be like be a manager? Is that like you understand? So that kind of person, you know, that person is not being is either not being sincere. Or this person just wants a job. This person just wants to make themselves look like they are the suitable, most suitable person for the job. That cannot be your, that can be one of the things that will help you achieve your biggest goal in life. But it can't be your biggest. Do you understand? So when you ask those kind of questions, you're able to check people's character. You're able to check what they are thinking. You're able to know, okay, what is it that um, is drawing them to your team? And this is very important that you settle it even before uh, uh, you get clear on exactly what you want to do. You know, some people will tell you, you need to do exactly what you want to do. But see, business is going to change. Go and check the big companies, Motorola, HP. Go and check all of them, Microsoft. Go and check all of them. Check how they started. Check what they were doing. Go and do your research. Check what they were doing when they started and what they are doing now. There are some companies that all they were doing when they started was uh, they were producing radio. And now they are into, you know, cell phones and all of that. You know, there are companies that what they are even doing now is not even related to, you know, what they started with. So, so things are going to change. Like the journey that I shared with you, journey from Lagos to Bruno Show, we didn't even know the road. We didn't even know exactly where, you know, we didn't know there would be details. We didn't, you know, plan for it really. We didn't plan for details. But when we got there, we, we were flexible enough, you know, to make that change. So those are the kind of people you need on your team. So you check all of those things, so their flexibility and all of For example, you know, somebody is saying, uh, okay, hey, I want job security, you know, and all of that. The truth is in today's world, that word job security, everything has changed. Because you have people on the team, and then tomorrow they say they want to Japa. If you are not in, a, in Nigeria, Japa is a slang for you know emigrating to greener pastures, quote unquote. You know, so if, what do you want to do? Are you going to say they should not go? Do you understand? Or they find a job that you know they feel that job is better for them. In our, we we support you. To, you know, understand? So we want those that really want to stay with us. Stay. Do you understand? So if somebody is talking about oh, uh, dream job security, you know, you know, this kind of person is not in reality, is not in line with it. You understand? So there are some things that you will see, and you know, based on what you have learned and all of that, you know that okay. So you have series of tests, series of processes that you take people through to help you find those that have those qualities. So the most important thing, like I said, I'm emphasizing it, the character qualities. Okay, the character qualities. Who are they? What kind of people are they? The things that you cannot train people for. Those are the things you should focus on primarily before you now focus on the other. So competence is also important, but character comes first, okay? Character and competence. And I'm going to share two examples with you, two biographical accounts. And um, one of the lessons I've learned is that in life generally, it's good for you to read biographies. Oh, excuse me, please. Uh, give me a minute to stop this. It's on schedule. Okay, please, just a minute, please. <laughs> um, please give me a minute. I hope I've not closed something I'm not supposed to close. Okay, so let's um, um, continue, okay? So I was saying that uh, one of the lessons I've learned in life is um, that you can learn a lot from biographies. Look at people that have done what you want to do. How did they do it? What did they learn? Instead of learning from your own experience alone, you can learn from their experience and accelerate your journey. You can stand on the shoulder of giants by studying how people did things and what they learned in the process and what you can apply. And for me, one book that has a lot of biographies, you know, if you can find a book that has a lot of biographies of different kinds of people in different kinds of places, you know, over a long period of time, hundreds of years, then you know that there is almost, you know, there's practically no spectrum of human experience that you can be going through or that you may want to do that would not have been captured in that book. 
And that kind of book, one of such books, if not the only you know, like one of such books that everybody agrees, is the Bible. Now, the Bible covers you know, the accounts of a lot of different kinds of people, different kinds of places, over hundreds of years. So that's why I say that the Bible is a book of life strategies. It's not just a religious book. Okay, so these biographical accounts I'll be picking are actually from the Bible, and they are from um, Jesus Christ and Gideon. Okay, look at how Jesus Christ built his team and how Gideon built his team. There are lots of other examples. We have David also, which, who is also an excellent example, you know, in team building and all of that. But um, for now, we want to look at Jesus Christ and Gideon. Now, one of the things you will find about these two people, and generally, you know, in team building, those that build teams that drive, you know, success over the long term, it is not easy to join their team. It's a rigorous process, rigorous. Now, that does not mean unnecessarily difficult. It does not mean brutal. It does not mean wicked. Okay, it does, you know, it means rigorous, you understand? That means you have been deliberately rigorous, not unnecessarily difficult. There are two different things, okay? So, uh, uh, look at Jesus, for example. Somebody wanted to follow him and say, see, you first have to go and sell everything you have, then come back and follow me. Who says that kind of thing? Do you understand? Somebody else wanted to follow him, said, uh, foxes have holes, bears have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. Okay, so if you want to follow me, you must be ready to carry your own cross daily and follow me, you know? He said a lot of profound things like that, people that wanted to join his team. On one occasion, you know, he was somebody that wanted to help people as an entrepreneur. You can't be an entrepreneur if you don't want to help people, okay? You want to solve their problems and all of that. But there are some people that they are just so focused on those problems. All they want is they just want you to solve their problem. They just want you to help them. They are not interested in driving your vision. There are people that want to join your team, maybe because you've made a name. Now that you've not made a name, they're not interested, or maybe because you've made a name, or maybe maybe some, some of them will also want to join your team because they feel like a small company and they can do anything they like. You understand? So you must know why everybody is doing what they are doing. You understand? They want because so people will join for different reasons. So in the case of Jesus Christ, there were these people that joined his team as it were because he was giving them bread. And then they were looking for him, gave them bread, gave them fish, like he was feeding them, he was meeting their needs. So they came, what they are saying, we've been looking for you. Where have you been? Ah, you know, and all of that. And he said, ah, you guys, you think I don't know why you are looking for me? Why? Don't make it look like you're interested in what I'm doing, no? Don't let make it look like you want to do this business with me, no? You are looking for me because you ate bread yesterday and you are looking for where today's bread will come from. So in the same way, there are people that want to join your team because you pay well, because you offer some benefits, maybe for play, flexibility, whatever. You know, all of those things are good, but they should not be the primary reason. They should just be like addition for the people that are going to be on your core team. We have different levels of team members, you know, or, or levels of team membership. We'll get to that, okay? Or different categories of team members. But those that are going to be on your core team, they should not be people that are doing it for what they will get. And if you look at it very well, look at it very well, you will find that some of the most committed workers in the world, they are volunteers. All of these people that work with IDPs, people that work in war zones, they are some of the most committed. How much are they being paid? Do you understand? Fine, you may say that the NGOs pay well, but look at the risk, look at everything. And for most of them, in fact, there are even people that are doing it for free. For those of you that are Christians, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you know, Muslims have that kind of structure. That's why I'm using Christians as an example. If Muslims have it, let me know. But for those of you that are Christians, you know that there are usually units in church, you know, this unit, that unit. And you'll be surprised that some people say, so, you know, some in security unit protocol. You will see the way they are serving. Like some of these people are bank managers. Some of them are, and some, they will pick group. They will pick broom and sweep, and they will come early, and they will do this thing. They will wash toilets, and nobody is paying them. Do you understand? So it's not about remuneration. Remuneration is important, but that should not be the motivation. If you don't have people that are motivated in and of themselves, you can't do anything to motivate them. So the motivation has to be intrinsic. So those are things you are looking out for when you are building a team. You have to reward people, but that reward is to make them stay, to make them feel that what they are doing is worthwhile. It is not to attract them. You understand? If it is people, if you attract people with what you are going to pay, by the time they see somebody that will pay more, they leave. You understand? Fine, you can't always stop that, but you can limit it. Do you understand? Okay, so Jesus told them, fine, now you came because of bread, but from now on, you are not going to eat bread again. And now you will eat my flesh and drink my blood. And when they heard that, they ran away. Of course, he was speaking figuratively, but he meant something. Then he told to the 12, you know, the 12 were his court team. Those were the people on his court team. And he told those ones, he said, ah, what are you waiting for? These ones have left. Are you also not going to leave? And Peter looked at him and said, where do we go? You are the one that have the words of life. So we're not going anywhere. So those people decided to stay. They had better offers. They had something that looked easier, but they decided to stay. Now look at what Jesus told those ones that were committed. The same Peter at some point, he said, oh, so now that we have left everything and followed you, what is our game? 
So what is again? And Jesus said, yes, you have everything that you have left, homes, houses, everything, family, you will have everything back now in this world and in the world to come. Now, but it's not immediately, you understand? So you need people that have that long-term perspective. Then you also now need to plan for them. They need to see. It's not that you are just saying they need to see that you are interested in them. They need to see that you are sharing the profit with them. They need to see that their lives are getting better. They need to see that it is what we are being with you. You understand? So those kind of people, you treat them differently. So the kind of things Jesus said to the multitude, you know, he, those things are different from the things he said to those that were close to him. And then he would break down things for them. He would give them insight, give them wisdom, you know, and all of those things. And he told those ones, he promised them. He said, you know, the, the ones that wanted to follow him that that not made up there. He said, see, you carry your cross daily and follow me. He told them, go and sell what you have and come and follow me. If there was one that said, I want to bury my father, and we said, let's them bury their dad. If you want to follow me, come and follow me. You know, look at the kind of things. But those that were committed, we told those ones, don't worry. You are all of these things, I will make sure that you get it back, okay? And then that you get much more in the world to come. And he promised them also that, okay, in my coming kingdom, okay, all of you are going to be this, you are going to be that. So people need to know that they have the opportunity for growth with you, you understand? As a you know, small company, you're just getting started a small business and you want to grow into a globally scalable business. You know, these are very important things. You won't have all of the money at the beginning, but there are people that will still work with you with all of their hearts. You know, as long as, you know, the conditions are right, which are some of these things we've been talking about, okay? So we're going to go uh, into it in more detail in subsequent um, um, episodes. Then uh, we're going to start um, with um, Gideon's example, but you can read the story of Gideon, okay, and then we can even discuss that on the discussion platform. You see the link to join the discussion platform before the end of this session if you have not joined already. So we'll start with the story of Gideon in the next uh, um, session and then see what we can learn about building a team. But the summary from this two, you know, the summary uh, uh, is that character will always be more important than technical competence, okay? So when you look at the army of Gideon, they practically used crude implements, crude, you know, and then out of like 30,000 people, he was able to find only 300 that had the kind of qualities they were looking for. And with that 300, they did a great, you know, a great work. So your team will never grow beyond the quality of your team. I mean, your business will never grow beyond the quality of your team. So you need to have the right kind of people on your team and make sure that the wrong kind of people don't join. And if the wrong kind of people join, they should not stay long. You should have a system that helps you to identify them and reach them out at the right time, immediately, like you are not wasting time. Do you understand? Okay, so that's very important. And that's where your people strategy comes in. And the two uh, major aspects of your people strategy are recruitment and performance management. We're going to cover those things in the subsequent um, um, session. And um, just uh, to show you uh, a bit of illustration, okay? And we're going to go into this in more detail in the next session, but I just want to show you uh, an illustration. Okay, now look at this. This is what we used to use. We don't use it anymore. We have you know, moved on from here, but this is what we used to use for our internship program. And our internship program at the Planning Content Company is one of the ways to which we build our team. So we're not looking for people that are already qualified. We're looking for people that are ready to learn, people that we can train, people that can grow with us. And the, the results have been amazing. People have gone through this internship and they've gone on to do amazing things, you know, start their own businesses, you know, the, the people that get a job and they have been paid like, they are being paid in multiple six figures. Young people that just finished school, right? just because they went through an internship program. So that's what we're saying about training people, developing people. You understand? Now look at the characters that you know the requirements that we have here. There's nothing like a big uh, skills. You must have ten years of experience. Like, we didn't put things like that. You understand? So, but the character quality is very important. Look at the requirements. Okay. So you know, so it helps you to know. Now I just want to show you a bit of you know some some things. I'm I'm going to um, share more uh, um, later on. I'm just showing you now from there we move to this look at this also look at the eligibility requirements okay look at this they have an open mind and teachable spirit then we broke it down okay then see they you know always think and act like a leader and an entrepreneur look at that okay so we like so you know if you are the kind of person we're looking for or not you understand you know look at all of these details so you have to you know think through these things and then you know how you are picking your team now look at someone that went through you know the process during my very first um, few months here i felt everything was rushed and i was actually struggling to keep up that's what we're saying about the process being rigorous it's a rigorous process you know what's a sorry sorry about this line but you know if you don't understand but those that understand we get it. if you don't understand it doesn't matter but if you understand you get it you know and let me know my last now it's like it is the people that are really committed people that are really strong that can weather the storm okay that's like you know what it means, you know. So LM is you create an LM Loma last kind of system. Do you get the point? Okay, so but I remember saying, ha, ah, now you guys should be coming down. But with time, I was able to adapt to the learning process. 
I've learned proper time management, outsourcing, and so many other things. There has been a shift in my spiritual life as well. My friends can testify. I've also met great and like-minded people, and I'm really looking forward to them. Do you understand? So people know that their lives are getting better by working with you, by joining your team. And this is just one, you can, there are lots and lots and lots of, you know, you know testimonials like that. So just, you can model this, you receive the link, you can model it, you know, and then, but then you need to understand the thinking behind it and how to interpret, you know, how to interpret the, the information that is submitted. Now, so from this, we moved on to a coaching program. We have a coaching program now where, you know, the people that have applied to join us before, we see that these people are just not, they, they don't look like it. But we don't just want to say that, oh, good, no, we, we're not taking it. No, because even Jesus, that's another part you should take note of in your recruitment strategy. He said, he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. So you accept everybody that comes to you. That does not mean you give every, them, every one of them a place. Many are called, few are chosen. You, know, you accept them first. Take them through a process. Then let the ones that are chosen show themselves that. Do you understand? Okay, let them prove themselves by how they conduct themselves, by how they relate, you know, by the kind of things they do and say, even without you having to tell them, okay, and all of that. Okay, for example, now one of the things that we do, that those that are going to work with us, they join a community where we discuss, this the discussion platform I've been talking about, you know, where we, you know, share things about building your business, growing yourself and all of that. And when we're talking about your business, it's not just about business in terms of, uh, in terms of running a business the way we understand it. Your business is whatever you are doing, okay? If you are working somewhere, that is your business. That's why, you know, there is this saying in English, mind your business. It doesn't mean that you are a business owner. Do you understand? So whatever your business is, we help you, you know, to shape it and all of that. You know, you can ask questions at any time, you know, answer and all of that. Now, if somebody that says, oh, I want to join your team, that kind of person is on that platform and we post information, the person does not respond. We say there is a training, the person does not attend. We already know that this person is possibly not, you know, the kind of person we're looking for, or this person is probably not as interested as they seem or as they claim to be. Do you understand? But we don't leave it at that. That's just one level. Then there is this, which we now call, the, you know, this is the, uh, uh, we call it the written interview because it's almost when you look at the questions, you look at, you look at it now, okay, what is most important to you in your life and why? What are the three biggest goals you would like to achieve over the next five years? So you know the kind of people they are. And if you know that uh, uh, your company or your business cannot help them achieve those, you, you are honest with them, you're upfront with them, sorry, you think it will be better elsewhere. Do you understand? Then after this, there is that process of joining a community that I talked about, watch how they behave and all of that. Then we have a video interview. Okay, there's a video interview that also comes. So by the time you go to all of that, then after that, there's a six weeks internship. Okay, so don't need the six weeks internship. You know, you are able to you know, check things. You are able to see if they can really do what they say they can do. Because many people say a lot of things. But it's not about what people say they can do. It's about what they show you. Okay, that they can. And when people show you who they are, believe them. Don't make excuses for them. When people show you who they are, believe them. You understand the so all of these things, but the details of this, we always cover the details in our workshop. That's why you know we can't cover everything in one seminar or even a series of seminars. But when we sit down, okay, in the workshop, we take one issue and we deal with it and we implement. So if you see what we're saying about um, you know technology enabled business, now we're beginning to integrate technology into the process. Now, all of these forms that I showed you, these online systems. Now, this now when people apply here, automatically they get an email, then they get instructions on next steps and all of that. Now we're using technology, we're beginning to leverage technology. Do you understand? So I will take you through a lot of things. We'll, we'll get to our, uh, our finances also, for example, okay, what are some technology tools you can use? We we'll get to customer relationship management, and then we're going to practicalize this. But I want to encourage you, ensure that you register for the workshop. We'll see the link as we go ahead, okay, because uh, at the workshop, you can sit down and deal with each person's issues. Now, what we're doing here is like general, you know, it's general for everybody. Everybody can apply it at some level, but the details need to be customized to each person's unique situation and each person's stage in the business. And that's what the workshop is for. That's why the workshop, you come there and you work. We work together. We, we stay overnight. It's usually two days. Okay, you come on, uh, on day one. You come, we start in the morning of day one. We leave in the morning of day two. So we have the entire night you know, to work and a very conducive atmosphere air condition if you don't want the air condition you can turn it off you know everything you need is available okay so i want to encourage you to um sign up and um, we'll take the discussion further so we'll continue the details of this in the next um, episode so if you have comments and questions that you've not posted please post them for those of you on the live call or the live meeting 
type in the chat, okay? Uh, and we're going to let's engage in the chat. But for those that are watching the recorded version, you can also post in the comments. More importantly, join the discussion platform if you are not there yet. That's Business Mastery Club. Connect.tpcl.com.ng slash RSVP. That's the link. Connect.tpcl.com.ng slash RSVP. When you type that link into your browser, it will lead you to a discussion platform. Join, okay? And then you can ask questions. You can contribute to the discussion and conversations. Then it's also important that you use the learning journal because lots of people, you attend seminar, you read books, you do a lot of things, and then you end up with information overload. This learning journal helps you to digest what we have just covered in such a way that you can implement it in practical text. So go to that link, resources.tpcl.com.ng slash learn. You can download the learning journal and fill it out. What are your action points? What are the things you learned? How will you implement them? It will really help you. Then the workshop I talked about, you can also see the link there, brainskills.fx slash workshop register we have it every month so we always notify the people that register so we notify you the next edition is on this day so usually as at I know, this time of speaking we hold it the third friday of every month third friday of every month and then we leave on the saturday okay but it can change that's why it's good for you to join the discussion platform we always see updates there okay but for now that is how you know, uh, it works so that you can think about it and plan for it, and then you can get notified when it's time. Okay, the course to think about for this week, these are micro learning session. Your business will reflect your character. If you are dishonest and self-centered, it will show up in your business and limit your growth. That's from Philip Amiola, think about that. And um, you can follow me on Twitter, okay, that's from me. You can follow me on Twitter, you get a lot of very useful stuff. That's my Twitter handle there, at Philip Amiola. Then we have this from Richard Branson. And this is one of the problems that many people face. Yeah, I should train people. I should help them grow. What if they leave? Okay, but we're going to cover that also. If you have questions around that, you can ask uh, on the discussion platform. We're going to cover it. Okay, now train people well enough so they can leave. Treat them well enough so they don't want to think about that. Okay, when, uh, when you are building your team. Okay, so let's take a closing prayer. I declare with full assurance of faith that I have a rich, satisfying and overflowing life. By the grace and mercy of God, I have received wisdom and power to build up vast assets that have continued to generate an abundance of wealth in profits, equity, retainers, consulting fees, dividends, interest, royalty, rental income, residual income, rebates, grants, gifts, annuity, capital gains, and other forms of income. My wealth and riches have continued to increase and multiply exceedingly so much that accounting for them is like counting the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. I daily present my business and career as an altar of sacrifice to God. Therefore, he has blessed the work of my hands, causing me to implement insights and ideas that have made me so successful that nations come to my light and clings to the brightness of my rising. I have become very great and extremely distinguished in every way. Amen. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Remember to share this with your friends. Ask them to join us on Business Mastery Club. Okay, here is the link again. Connect.tpcl.com.ng slash RSVP so that they can always get the latest updates. They can ask their questions. They can join the conversation and also get to participate uh, in other opportunities, you know, take advantage of opportunities that will, you know, really be very useful for them. Thank you very much and bye for now. <laughs>